You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Sunday. We are back and doing it. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team increasingly every day. (laughs) We're getting back into it. Last week was a little bit of a cluster, like I said, on whatever day that was, Friday. This is like going to Big Rapids and all of these different things. I intended on doing a podcast yesterday, and then Zuri had some issues, and we were at the vet all day and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, but there was also the little one change. If, you, if you're listening, there's a chance that I sound different. And if you're watching, you'll notice that I have this different microphone. And I have, I'm increasing my audio setup to got the Slate Digital ML1. Got the UA Volt 276 over here. We are amping up the quality of what we are doing. At least that is the hope and the goal. So anyway, we are going to go back and do the mailbag from a week and a half ago. (laughs) Because that's where we're at. But uh, that's so that's what we're going to do today. uh, And we are going to knock that out. It's not that long compared to some of the other mailbags. We are in the dead of the off season. So it is what it is. So anyway, let's get to it. Starting with our leaders and best, James Crudup at James Crudup 6. Top five current college football coaches in order. If you don't have Harbaugh in your top five, where would you have him? Uh, the funny thing is, is when I when this came through, I remember sitting there and brainstorming it, and then I left it alone, and here we are again, and I have to do it off the top of my head. So obvious number one is Nick Saban. I mean, that goes without saying. Uh, he is easily one of the best uh, in across all sports. Uh, easily the best in college football, period. He is the GOAT. He has been phenomenal uh, with what he has done. So he is number one. Number two, this is where things are automatically start getting tricky because you don't have a bunch of guys that have won a bunch of national championships, right? Uh, because like Ed Orgeron won one. He's not a head coach anymore. Uh, Jimbo Fisher won one. I, I don't think he is one of the best, right? Like I think he is very good. I don't think he is one of the best. Um, you've got, uh, Kirby smart. Who's won one. I also don't know that he is, that he is worthy of being this high. Obviously number two is Dabo Swinney because he, uh, turned Clemson from a school that didn't really do much of anything into, uh, into a team that has won several national championships. We'll see if they get back on that track. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but, uh, I think that that's, that's, you know, he, he the job he's done regardless has been absolutely phenomenal. So then after those first two, then we start having to get into into a bunch of different things uh, that uh, I don't know that I can put a guy like, for instance, I don't I don't think that we can put a guy like Steve Sarkeesian in it, obviously, uh, even though I don't know why I even said that. Uh, I was going to say Ryan Day. I don't think we can put a guy like Ryan Day in there uh, because even though what he has done looks really good on paper with uh, everything, what he inherited everything from urban and has just had to kind of keep things going at the level. Uh, I think he's recruited better than urban has, but I don't necessarily think that uh, it's, that means it's been insane, you know, like what, what he's done. Like, I think a lot of coaches could have come. I think for instance, I think that Jim Harbaugh would have gone in and would have had the same, if not better results, you know, than, than Ryan day. Uh, if he would have taken over from what Urban had. Um, same thing with a couple other guys. Um, I'm going to have to go ahead and put, I th- I think I'm going to have to put Kirk Ferentz in at number three, and I know that might seem really weird, but, I mean, that guy has just been crazy consistent, and Iowa's really bad sometimes and is really good. It's just one of those things, though. It's Iowa might be in the Big Ten, but it is in the middle of nowhere. It is impossible to recruit to. And he has been relatively consistent. They almost always seem to have a top 25 team. They might not be a team that could be national championship caliber, but I urge anyone to go to Iowa and try to have the success that he has had. Uh, I don't, it doesn't surprise me that Mary Sue Coleman was targeting him for the Michigan head job uh, before Rich Rodriguez. Um, so I, I will go ahead and go with, uh, with him there. Um, next, I think... I mean, I think the Big Ten's got so many good coaches. I think we're going to stay in the Big Ten probably for the rest here. 
because I think next time I'm going to go the same same type of deal with Pat Fitzgerald. I think he is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, and uh, I, I don't know that I'm going to go Jim Harbaugh 5. I think Jim's probably around like 7, 8, 9, maybe 10. I don't know. Um, maybe maybe he's higher. We'll see what happens kind of from here. Uh, but Pat Fitzgerald, same deal. It's even tougher in uh, Evanston than it is in uh, than Iowa City. Um, and let me think, who else would I would I put in here? You know, I'll go ahead and say, I mean, part of me wants to go Mark Stoops because of what Kentucky being in that same type of deal. There's so many that would have been on this list that, you know, is gone, you know, like, unfortunately, Urban or like Chris Peterson, um, some of those types of guys. But I think that I've got to go with, um, I, I think I'm going to put Kirby here because let's face it, as much as I like to hate on Georgia, he has done a really good job uh, and has elevated that program. So we will do that. All right, Josh Biajadiki, clearly a stacked offense from a talent perspective. Should the actual biggest concern being the co-OCs and the splitting of the play calling duties? Um, in some degree, yes. I have a lot of faith because, I mean, this isn't like these guys are completely new. I mean, they've been around, you know, they, it's, I think that everything is kind of, I do think that that's probably, yeah, you're probably right. That is the biggest concern because, I mean, it's it's pretty much running things back from last year. So it, it is a matter of how do they manage the game day stuff? How do they, you know, manage the playbook? How do they build on what, not, you know, what we saw last year, not regressing, building on it? I, I think that that's probably, you're probably right in that light. Um, that said, I'm not terribly concerned. Not at all. Um, and, you know, just having sp- spoken with uh, some of the people involved on Thursday, yeah, I, I'm even less concerned. Uh, so, Jimmy Whitner at Jimmy Whitner 1, will we wear the all maze this year? Uh, I definitely think they will. I don't know what game they would probably, because um, Iowa seems like that might be a bad one <laughs> because their crowd and, you know, their colors and whatever. I could see them doing it for Ohio State if Ohio State doesn't nix it. Um, I, I, they tried to wear it against Penn State, and it didn't work. I liked the way that they handled that, though. I liked that better than the all Maze, personally. Number two, which position group has the most potential to surprise, good or bad? Um, I think that uh, the linebackers. Uh, and listen, I am, I am much higher on the linebackers than I've been for a while. Um, it, there's still a lot of questions, but I feel really good about it. There's some stuff, some players that I think will be involved that we haven't, no, we don't know anything about yet. Like I think Jimmy Rolder could come in and have a Junior Colson type role from last year. Really excited about Junior Colson. I think Nakai Hill Green is a little bit underrated. Uh, Kalel Mullings, I think, is gonna, taking that step forward. Michael Barrett, I think we have as a known commodity. We'll see how Jaden Hood does. I think that that has the potential of being a really, really good position group. I think that like with Junior Colson leading the charge, and I'm not even counting the guys that are outside linebackers, Jalen Harrell. And, uh, you know, if you want to con- include like Mike Morris in that list, I mean, have at, but I'm thinking more of the traditional linebacker types. I think that this group could be just insane. Um, but I mean, also because of a lack of proven, you know, um, commodities without Josh Ross, it, it could go the other way. So I think that that's probably the position that I've got my eye on. For the team summer tour of the state, what city, in your opinion, is a must see? Well, I haven't seen a lot of the state per se. I only started going up north for the first time uh, about six, seven years ago. Um, well, actually, 10 years ago, I went to Marquette in my old job working for uh, working in politics. We flew up for a campaign event into Marquette. It was cold and rainy, so didn't really get to see it. Um, but uh, I think that the uh, uh, I, I mean, Traverse City to me, just when I say Traverse City, I'm also including like Sleeping Bear. I know that's like a half hour away, but I think that whole region, it just doesn't even feel like what you know Michigan to be. I think the west side of the state as well is kind of the same. Uh, while some people really like like Lettington, uh, and you're like I haven't been, I know this is north of Sleeping Bear, I haven't been to Leland uh, Fish City or whatever. Uh, but like I love Grand Haven, absolutely. Again, feel like I'm in more in Malibu, and someone who used to spend a lot of time in Malibu. That's kind of what I, I feel like that's it's like Malibu light. Um, whenever I've gone there in the summer, um, and uh, I'm a big fan of Charlevoix as well. But I mean, they'll be seeing things that I haven't seen. They'll going to be 
going to picture the rocks and all that kind of stuff. So that's all stuff that I haven't seen. So I don't really know. All right. We are very long in segment one, but we are shorter in segment two. So we're going to keep going here. Uh, KRT at Farmark 84. Will the recent NIL changes related to the block M, et cetera, finally allow NIL possibilities to take off? A hundred percent because now being able to use the block M, being able to use the wing helmet. I mean, the, this now, like who wants to buy a shirt of a guy that looks like he's, you know, he's just wearing generic blue and, and maize. Now it's like you're wearing a Michigan shirt that has an actual, you know, has an actual deal, right? Like that has, that looks like a Michigan shirt, you know, things can really take off now suddenly. Um, and using that in a variety of different things, I think that's absolutely going to be a game changer. Michigan already has the most recognizable helmet in all of college football. Uh, that has the, the branding is arguably the biggest brand uh, in the world when it comes to college. Uh, so it will be definitely this is huge for Michigan to be able to take advantage of that or the players to be able to take advantage of that. Continuing, how was the Deftone show? One of my favorite bands since the late 90s. Amazingly, their new stuff is still pretty solid. Uh, I, don't, I don't hate the new album, uh, but uh, the last, last one I didn't like, Gore. I hated Gore. Um, I loved Abs- Diamond Eyes is maybe my favorite album of theirs. I liked Kono Yokan almost as much. Uh, the two albums before it were kind of meh um, in... Uh, Deftones and uh, Saturday Night Wrist, and then obviously White Pony is a masterpiece. Anyway, anyway, uh, how was the Deftones show? It was okay. I think Chino Marino needs voice lessons. <laughs> it doesn't. That sounds weird because you listen to him on the album. It sounds great, but in person, I I thought he was really bad most of the time. He got better as the show went on, which is good, but uh, generally I thought he was off key and that made it really kind of grating. And at at some points the band just did not seem very cohesive and it was really disappointing. I realized now, like there's a reason why this was only my third time seeing the Deftones, right? Like, because that, so did not expect that. Um, anyway, finishing out segment one, Jonathan Joseph at J Joseph 2156. How big is it that players will be a lot? Okay. we already covered that with the other one, but uh, I've obviously I should have combined these, but how big is it that players will be allowed to use the wing, the helmet, block M and NIL deals? I mean, it, it is obviously giant, as I said. All right, so sorry, so just, uh, Jonathan, not to give you that much credence there. I uh, forgot to combine those two questions in my list here. All right, we are going to continue on. We have plenty more left, uh, but before we do, and of course it's not, uh, okay, my computer frozen. Well, not my computer, but the um, my ad read decided that it was going to go away. So that's fun. That's real fun. So let's do this again. Don't you love a chewy chocolatey brownie? What about a caramel brownie with caramel swirled on top? So good. What if I told you you could have all that chewy chocolatey deliciousness plus 17 grams of protein? Well, you're in luck because caramel brownie bars are available at built.com right now. You got to act fast because they're a fan favorite. Forget about dessert. These are better than dessert. Plus the macros are unreal. 130 calories, 17 grams of protein, and only four grams of sugar. I would replace a regular brownie with built caramel brownie bar in a heartbeat. The best part, caramel brownie bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. Like for real, but built, uh, with built, you don't have to sacrifice tasty for healthy. You can have both. And all of the built bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides a ton of health benefits. There are a million reasons why you should try built bars. But for now, let's just say caramel brownie will rock your world. That's not an understatement. With built tasty is the new healthy. Go to built.com, get your box of caramel brownie bars now. So go to built.com, use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. All right, let's continue on. Plenty more to come. Uh, only a couple in this segment, but that is what we're going to do. Actually, three question askers. So there we are. Uh, all right. And uh, we got uh, a couple people that asked the one question. Let me see. Because I just did not combine anything. Maybe, maybe it was only the once. I, sw- I swore I saw this like three times. Okay, whatever. Jim at Jim in the North. It seems to me 
at least, that Michigan almost treats MSU just like another game while for them is their Super Bowl. Am I correct? Or do you think that they get hyped up? Just seems like we've had two years now where MSU played above their weight and beat us, and we seemed flat. 100% uh, think that that is the case, and I think that's what, uh, one of the reasons why Michigan uh, was able to go in and win 2018 the way it did. Um, it was because it they did not treat it like another game. But I do think that they went into 2018 very overconfident I think that they didn't treat it as another game in 2021 but I still think that there was a little bit of like hey we're good with you know they're not as good as we are we can go ahead and go in and win this so I do think that that was a part of it I don't they don't treat it the same as Ohio State um, or I don't know it's kind of hard to say because they like when I say that I mean they didn't treat Ohio State like Ohio State until this last year you know like they really didn't and uh, you know I've I've had some behind the scene conversations, let's just say that were jarring a couple of years ago. <laughs> and it's it 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 was very frustrating to cover. So anyway, yeah, I think that they are they 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 haven't necessarily always co- with either uh have have they necessarily had the emphasis on those games as they should. Uh and I think a lot of that is, you know, I I think they've had emphasis, right, more than some of the other games. But I think that overall, the you know the next game is the most important game mentality that you know NFL type mentality. Uh, I think that Jim cultured that because he thought that that was the best way to go uh, and because of his time in the NFL. And I don't I think that works in the NFL. I don't think it works in college. And I think that that what was a lesson learned. I mean, it took way too long to learn it, but I think that lesson was learned, and I think that we've seen uh, that as a result. So. Uh, all right. Sorry, my microphone does still keep falling. So if I, if my sound, I'm going to compress the heck out of this. But if my sound keeps falling down, then that's why. Still trying to. I don't know why I can't get this mic stand to just stay. It's spring loaded and it just likes to not stay where it's supposed to be. Uh, and obviously this was asked beforehand, but amps for Obi Wan. Uh, I a thousand percent was. I was super excited to to see the first three episodes. I am loving it so far. I'm a little disappointed in one plot point where a character that's in Rebels uh, didn't uh, didn't survive, which makes it mean seem like canon might be going by the wayside. But I assume that they will figure it, that out. But yes, I am super amped for it, super excited about it. Uh, I can't wait for it to continue on. I wish it wasn't only six episodes. I wish every episode was longer. That's where I'm at. Zach Van Lenzi at Lenzi Zach. Glad to have you back. I hope things are getting better for you. Thank you. They are slowly but surely, but it is still a process. Uh, what is more likely to happen first, Michigan beats Ohio State again, or Michigan evens the score with Tucker at MSU? Uh, I think that uh, Michigan has a real shot. Oh, keeping in mind, Michigan even the score against MSU. This is that's a hard question because I I do feel like Michigan has a real good shot to beat MSU this next year. But then the following year, I'm not sure because Michigan certainly could lose a lot of the team uh, after this next year and it might be a little bit harder um and i don't know msu well enough to know what they'll look like after this year i know what they look like this year though i think michigan's got a real shot to beat ohio state again this year uh having talked to a, a current player at the spring game and they, they had said like this is what they had told me they said the tables have turned we know it they know it and they feel like they're that they're going to be able to go and win that game in Columbus. The mentality is completely different in Ann Arbor than it had been before. So, with that in mind, I think that Michigan beating Ohio State again is probably the more likely and will happen first because I think that Michigan will win again this year. I don't know about next year, you know, and they would have to beat uh, Michigan State twice to even the score against Tucker. Uh, I know you're not big on recruiting anymore, but who would the, fit the offense better, Carr or Moore? I honestly don't know. Um, honestly, if I was going to take one or the over the other, I would still take Dante Moore. But I honestly haven't seen much CJ Carr, to be honest. Uh, I, have, I have known Dante since he was in eighth grade when he got his offer. Um, and I think he is incredible. I think it, it's that you need the optics more of getting this five-star than necessarily getting uh, getting CJ Carr. Uh, even though the optics for losing him was not great either, but that's that's still just where I'm at there. Um, so, yeah. 
All right, Mark Z at Mark Zimke finishing us out in segment two. If you were projected first round pick, would you rather be picked very high, likely bad team, but higher chance to start, or very low, very good team, but likely more competition? Um, I would rather be because I think if you're if you're in this game of football, I think that you probably think that you are one of the best and that you are going to be able to go and make it. You know, you want to be able to make an early impact, and yes, assuming that you are you know worth your salt, you are going to be able to do exactly that. Plus a lot more money. So maybe financially part of it is, is that for me. Um, but I would rather be a part of the rebuild in that sense and than uh, necessarily go to a team that's like really good. Assuming that it's like, I mean, if I'm thinking in, if you're in an Aiden Hutchinson type situation, now if you're in the middle, right? Like say you're like a, a, a guy that's you know supposedly going to be somewhere, like going anywhere between you know 10 and 25 or something like that. Uh, and, you know, financially it was like, you know, all kind of essentially the same. Then, yeah, of course, I'd rather be more 25 for the sake of being on a better team. But, um, I mean, there's always free agency. There's all kinds of things that go into effect when it comes to that. So that's not just the end all be all there. All right, let's continue on. We've got a few more here. But uh, before we do, betonline.net. Is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship matchup, NHL hockey conference finals, Major League Baseball, and of course, all the latest fighting news from MMA and UFC to boxing. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, we just have a few more questions left. I think we got four here. So, all right, let's see here. Sean Stites at Sean Stites 16. Update on what Michigan is doing to turn the tide in the recruitment of CJ Carr. Again, I don't, I don't really know because I have not been covering recruiting for the last year and a half. Uh, update on when Michigan will turn the page, knowing full well that Moore is not coming to Michigan and they get the next available QB option in that class. Again, I don't think that that's, a, I know it seems like a foregone conclusion. Where Michigan stands with Dante Moore right now is where Michigan stood with Donovan Edwards two years ago at this time, okay? It was pretty much the same. The difference was is everyone is saying what's going on with Moore. Where I, It seemed like I was the only person out there saying what was going on with Donovan Edwards at that time. Everyone else was like, oh, he's coming. He's coming. I was more tuned in, plugged in to that recruitment. And this isn't something that I say very often, especially because I haven't really covered recruiting that much. But that was the most tuned in I have ever been to in a, a recruitment. I knew every single thing that was going on. I got so much candor when it, it came to uh, what was happening. And it seemed like a lot of the other outlets did not have that. They were like, I remember some people coming to me and being like, dude, our board is going nuts because of what you said on your podcast stop saying these things because it's not true. And I'm like, it is true though. And it's like, where did I get it? Huh? I got it from a kid whose name was Donovan Edwards at that time as a recruit. So with that in mind, uh, I, I, I don't know that Moore is necessarily not coming to Michigan, but you know what? I am close with Dante. Let's, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what I am going to see if I can get him, uh, on the record sometime here before too long with sometime in the next couple of weeks, we'll try to get him on the record. And, uh, yeah, I know I his recruitment has really blown up since he and I have last talked on the record. So, uh, no promises, but we will see what we can do. Diet Coke enthusiast, Kevin, uh, Patrick at K P K K I K Q. I can't say K I E L C Z. That's, we really nailed that. Didn't we? Will Pump It Up carry over this upcoming season, or was that strictly a 2021 thing? I think I would imagine that that's going to continue until, you know, if, if they, I mean, if they continue to play it and things go well, then they'll continue it as a tradition. It will become a permanent tradition, but if not, then it won't. That simple. I don't think it will just stop, you know. At some point, this microphone is going to stay up. Nick Anselm at Nick Anselm. What do you know about Michigan's chances to land five-star defensive end Nicole's Harbor? I'm not seeing much info on where he's leaning. Uh, is he wanting to be a dual sport athlete in college? And does Michigan have a good track program? Uh, Michigan ha does have a very good track program. And again, this is information I know only because of uh, the other sites. But yes, Michigan is in really good standing. 
Uh, I believe that if he was to choose today, Michigan would be the choice, but that doesn't necessarily always mean anything. Remember, uh, Josh Connerly, if he would have chosen anywhere between September and October last year, Michigan would have been the choice, and then he didn't end up going to, to Michigan at all uh, and end up going to Oregon. Uh, but uh, Michigan has a really beyond solid chance. These currently, uh, they have the lead, but there's a long way to go. Pilium at Chiliampilium. That's really convoluted to say. Uh, what, uh, what, what do you think is Michigan's most likely trap game? Uh, I, I got to look up the schedule again for this year just because I think I know which one I'm going to say, but I want to make sure I'm right. Mm, I don't know, actually, because now that I look at it, I was going to say I was going to say Nebraska, but Nebraska is sandwiched between Rutgers and Illinois, which are between. So it goes just for conference, non-conference. So let's just go through the whole schedule. Colorado State, Hawaii, Connecticut, Maryland, at Iowa, at Indiana, Penn State, Michigan State, at Rutgers, Nebraska, Illinois, at Ohio State. I mean, if Indiana is improved, it's at Indiana. Because it's right before their little what what have you, I mean maybe it is still Nebraska, but I mean I, I think it, it the schedule is just it's perfect in my eyes, just the way it goes like three you know three super easy then Big Ten you know opening the Big Ten with a uh, an opponent that certainly if they have a defense it could be it could be a game that's because of how good their offense is and Michigan trying to work in their defense, then you've got Iowa which is going to be a hard game, especially because it will likely be at night. You've got Indiana, which, I mean, Indiana was terrible last year, but do they go back to what they were two years ago? Maybe. I don't think they have a quarterback to do it, but we'll see. Penn State, Michigan State, you're going to be in high alert for either of those. It's Neither can be a trap game. Rutgers, I don't think, is good enough to be a trap game still, but it is at Rutgers, so, I mean, maybe it's Rutgers. I know that's weird to say, but maybe. If Rutgers is improved, certainly that could be a chance, but Rutgers' schedule is brutal. I guess the real answer is actually, and that goes in Nebraska, Illinois. It's Illinois because certainly Burt wants to have uh, his, you know, his big signature win. If he's able to beat Michigan, that would be that. I mean, they beat Penn State last year when no one thought they could. It's the week before Ohio State, so it's Illinois. So that is what it is. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you for watching and or listening. So glad to have you on a weekend, but uh, we will be back this week. Uh, we are supposed to be going into three-day weeks officially for the site. I know I've been doing zero-day weeks some of this time, but uh, my goal is to do three or more for the foreseeable just to kind of make up for some of the absence that I've had. Uh, so that uh, that is the goal, but uh, as anything, it will be intermittent. We'll do our best. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching and or listening. We'll talk to you again soon. Peace. <laughs>